Hello everyone, great interview coming up today with Manuel Cross from Rogue Perfumery. Don't forget to get your fragrance samples at myfragrancesamples.com. That's the best place to get them in the USA and Canada. There's a link in the description. Quickly, I'd like to apologize. The sound on this video, my mic was not plugged in, so it came from the computer mic. Not as good as I'd hoped, but I fixed it up. It's actually pretty listenable. Sorry, it's not as good as it normally would be. Let's get into the interview. Hello, folks. Welcome back to a very special edition of the show. We've got an interview with an esteemed perfumer, and we are going to welcome today Manny, otherwise known as Manuel Cross, the perfumer, and brand owner of Rogue Perfumery. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, it's, well, thank you so much for being here. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show. So we're going to get stuck into it. So uh, a lot of the fans of my channel here uh, uh, know that I'm a big fan of your work. And we're going to find out all about you during the course of this interview. I've got several of your fragrances. I am a huge fan of things like Chiclet, Siam, Mousse Illumine, one of the ones that really established your, your burgeoning reputation in the community. And I've also got this one, of course, the famous Fougere fragrance, Bon Monsieur, and I also have a uh, more most recent purchase, Derviche. Derviche, mm. a little bit more of an exotic fragrance. So I'm excited to find out a bit more about, about you. So um, I'll call you Manny, as that's what you put on the screen. I hope you don't mm -hmm. mind me being familiar. It's wonderful to have you here. Whereabouts are you in the world then, please, Manny? I live in East Idaho. Oh, it's a little town called Idaho Falls. Rogue Perfumery, then, a brand that uh, the, the niche connoisseurs and Indian artisanal house connoisseurs will be familiar with. In case anyone's not, it's a brand that started, uh, sorry, what year did you guys start? 2017. 2017. Yes. Yeah. Famous for uh, many, many things, including uh, perhaps it's fair to say some slightly old school leaning styles and famously uh, not always complying to the modern IFRA regulations. So sometimes we've got a bit more oak moss in there, apparently, but I will quiz you about this, than mm -hmm. most of the, the mainstream maybe houses use. So let's get stuck into it right away. So what did you do? Because I, I know a little bit about this. What did you do before you became a perfumer? I was a chef prior to that. I've been in the industry for about 20 years, actually. Uh, a little wow. more than 20 years, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Uh, now, that interests me. So you're working in, in sort of big restaurants and that kind of thing. Would that be right? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah, restaurants. Um, I, I was with Wolfgang Puck for a few years. Uh, worked in San Francisco. Uh, did a lot of catering with different outfits. Uh, we had our own catering uh, company for a little while, too. Okay. It was just, we were just always immersed in that kitchen environment. My, my wife said the same thing. We met in cooking school. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any particular, could you do all kinds of food or was there anything that you specialized in? Well, I mean, in cooking school, I mean, you have the, your, your foundation is your, your classic uh, French cookery. I mean, mm -hmm. so, I mean, everything will be based in that, but I mean, I picked up a lot of things on the way. Um, I, picked up Southeast Asian cooking, which was, um, it, it seemed like a mystery, but my, my wife's family is actually from the, the south of Thailand. She was born here, but she, she grew up eating a lot of those, a lot of those things. And yeah, she pretty much taught me how, how to do it. Okay. My mother -in -law tried teaching me, but I, <laughs> It, it didn't go so well with my mother. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I don't like to listen to mother-in-laws too much, but if it's my wife, I'd probably take more. I don't have a wife, but I think I'd pay more attention. Okay, now that's fantastic. By the way, guys, I'm going to put the link to the Rogue Perfumery website down there in the description. Uh, do go and check them out. They've got a fantastic range of fragrances. I actually bought mine in the UK at Lux. Uh, parfums in the UK who stock yes. them. So that's where I've been buying mine more recently. Uh, so if you're in the UK, don't despair. You can get these these guys. Okay. And if people are elsewhere in the world, outside of the UK or the USA, can they still get them uh, elsewhere in the world? Quasio uh, Natural in Spain. And I believe mm -hmm. they ship all over EU. Uh, Seven Cents in Hungary. I, I don't know if they just stay specifically within the country if they ship all over. Okay. What I'll do is I'll do after we're off air. I'll try and get those links and put them all in the description so as many people as possible can can try these out. That's fantastic. Okay. So obviously we can see there could be a little bit of a link because it all involves ingredients and blending and this kind of thing. But what? How did this transition from being a chef to becoming a perfumer happen? What occurred? Uh, I mean, I was I was a collector to begin with. I mean, I, I still have my bottle of Chanel Louise from the from the 90s. I mean, I, I still have it put away, but I, I was a collector. Um, yes. I eventually discovered 
base notes, which pretty much took me down the rabbit hole with, with the collecting. And I, I just found myself, you know, trying to, what would you call it? Chase, chase that unicorn. You know, you're going on eBay, you're trying to find vintage bottles of things. Yes. And, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just a little hard on the pocketbook. And I, I just begin to wonder like what, what goes into the making of a fragrance. Yeah. Well, I'm sure many of us will, will uh, have a, a similar experience. Yeah, I've certainly bought plenty of vintage things on eBay. And as you say, it can be uh, very elusive to find the bottle you want. Sometimes they're in great condition. Sometimes they don't smell how they should. So yeah. it's a little bit of a, a Russian roulette game doing that. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, so it was, you, you were a collector. Uh, you had the, uh, an interest in the vintage stuff. And you, you did kind of come into this in sort of the modern era of there being a large online thing like base notes etc where we can talk about perfumes more than we could in the 90s or whatever right yes yeah okay and, and there's, there was a lot of i mean collectively there there was a lot of information you know to be found online but you know it was just a matter of having to to filter through to find you know good information versus misinformation yes it was, it was about a almost nine, eight to nine years of just lots of trial and error and just working at it until wow. I was able to actually put something together that performed like a fragrance, you know, okay. just you know, like a, like some kind of muddy essential oil blend. Yes, yeah. yes. There's more to yeah. it than people probably realize. I, I having well, yeah. I've not really dabbled yeah. myself, but I know a few people who've, who've messed around with oils, and it's not as easy as people think. Now, okay, so it took you that long. It's not a case of you, you, you know, you, you got interested in the idea, and within a year you suddenly had a brand. This was, you say, like eight or nine years of gradually. Uh, so it yeah. sounds like maybe teaching yourself how yes. to how to become a real true perfumer. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so yes. a long road, a long road. And so you are, you are totally self-taught? I am, yes. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, I love it. Okay, um, let's talk about the fragrances of your brand in a second. Before we do that, just intrigued because we've got a lot of classic fragrance lovers. You mentioned the Egoist. So can you mention a few other uh, fragrances not of your own brand that are even maybe some modern ones or and or vintage ones that are some of your absolute uh, favorite classics that got you passionate about the hobby? Yeah, I, I've, I've thought about that. I've tried to narrow that down. And I mean, really, a lot of the, I would say, if not all, but most of the fragrances in the Aramis line seem to really push all the buttons for me. Yes. If you have, you know, Havana, Ar I mean, Aramis, I mean, they're, they're yes. just great fragrances. And I mean, what, what those were like, what one of those coming out like seventies, eighties? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I believe that one was like in late sixties. Yeah, I think it, I think it was sixty six. Yeah, Aramis, mm -hmm. the original Aramis by Aramis. I, I still love it. I think it's yeah. absolutely Actually, fantastic. Ah, <laughs> no, that was about it. ah, there you go. That's an uh -huh. old one, isn't it? Yes. So you're a, a man. Yeah, some, some kind of a. I think it was like a limited release. I, I, it's the same fragrance. I think it's just the leather wrapping that they put on. Oh, the okay. Effect. Me being All me, right. I had to collect it, of course. Yes, we're both collectors in that way. And Aramis Havana, of course, a great mid-90s release with a really nice tobacco note. So, okay, fantastic. Mm. Aramis. And nice, a lot of these still affordably available. You know, the modern version of Aramis, still really good. So that's that's something good. I think things like um, Havana now, I think recently discontinued, but I, I think that's a great uh, house to highlight there. So, guys, if, if you're into your old school gems, uh, don't miss out some of the classics from Aramis. Okay, so... To cut a long, well, I mean, we could do a longer interview, but I'm going to keep it short and snappy. So, mm -hmm. come 2017, you've launched your own brand. What was the kind of the, the, the ethos, the idea behind your your fragrance brand? What was your what was your unique mission there at Rogue Perfumery? Uh, the mission was to put out great fragrances that you know capture a lot of those those elements of of the past of those vintage fragrances. And um, also just to have, have them at an, an affordable price because, I mean, if you remember like in like early 2000s when, you, you know, a lot of the niche fragrances were coming out and I mean, there a lot of them were very unaffordable and I wanted to be able to put out something that was of that quality, but, you know, still trying to keep that under a hundred dollars. Yeah, which I think is very, very admirable. Uh, I believe now you guys do them in 100 and 
50 mil. I think those are your two main sizes now. But initially, I think we had some 30 mils, or are there still 30 mil ones that you can buy now? Yeah, we, yeah, we do 30. We do 75 mil is our largest size. Oh. And for a while, we are doing 50 mil because um, – Yes. Well, the uh, post COVID, you know, there was just a lot of uh, problems with freighting, and okay. there was a period where we were running out of our seventy-five mil bottles, and okay. they were just stuck in shipments. So we brought in the fifty mils to, you know, have a, an optional size. Okay, but yeah, great range of sizes, and I think the thirty mil size is is really appreciated by the connoisseurs and collectors, many of whom. Uh, perhaps don't always need a 100 mil bottle when they, they have dozens on the shelf there. So let's talk about a couple, if you don't mind. Because um, yeah. yeah, as, as I say, I was people sent me samples of your stuff, actually, because they, they knew that I like the old school. And somebody said, you must try this Moose Illumini or Illumine. And, and that was the first one that really excited me from you guys. And I believe your, uh, your spiel there on the website des describes it unapologetically as an attempt to recreate an 80s powerhouse and i have to say mm -hmm. i think you did a fantastic job so just give us a little bit of a, a, a information about the thought process behind this one of my favorites from your brand moose illumine yeah it, it was just as he said it I, I wanted to try to do one of those powerhouse types and uh you remember there were a lot of those kind of conifer notes i i used frankincense to help build some of those conifer notes along with cypress leaf oil um i actually almost never released moose illumine you know, I, I came up with the fragrance, I, I liked it, but I was, it just kind of seemed out there. I was thinking people aren't, aren't gonna get this. You know, it, it, it's borderline medicinal. I, I almost just never released it. Wow. I, yeah, I just took a okay. shot in the dark and put it it's, out there. It's, it's probably daring. Uh, yeah, as you say, very green and coniferous. I've heard some people compare it to vintage polo green by Ralph Lauren. Um, I, I can see the similarity, but th there's so much about it that's unique that that, that would yeah. be a very gross oversimplification. Yeah, uh, but polo, you like, I don't know. Yeah. polo would remind me of something I'd, I'd recall smelling like in high school or something. But yeah. I, I, I guess it's maybe, maybe it's like within the same, definitely within that same genre perhaps, but yeah, yeah. No, guys, it, it truly is unique. So do do check this one out. Yeah, a bit of a powerhouse. Great performance on these. Absolutely amazing. And that just makes me think of one other thing there. So this is and somebody, another perfumer said they'd had a chat with you and they actually found some of your perfumes do comply with IFRA re regulations. But one of the things we were all talking about when we first found out about you a few years ago was that supposedly your fragrances were certainly not built to comply with the IFRA fragrance regulations, the bureaucrats who limit what can get a certificate from them and, and therefore a lot of modern fragrances have had mm -hmm. to be reformulated or new releases don't have as much oak moss as they used to or certain other ingredients so um is that is that fair to say that you you are in some cases using bigger amounts of eg oak moss and other things than if regulations would allow well as far as the whole the the whole uh regulation things goes um in, in the beginning, I was I was a bit naive as to how the regulations worked, so I I just I thought that these were must have been out of regulation, but I I later a few years later I, I sent samples out to a lab to have them tested. I was curious, and I maybe it was just dumb luck, but they all happened to be within the oh. current regulations. Um, <laughs> probably not now. I think the most recent amendments. I think everything's fallen out of regulation now. But I I never really was striving to you know purposely go heavy on on this material or that it, it's mostly a matter of you know I, I have an idea of what i want the finished fragrance to smell like and just using the right amount it takes to to get to that target okay so we, we won't overplay the ifra issue too much but the the essence of the idea is that you're looking to do things a little bit how they did maybe in some cases back in the oh, 70s, 80s, the, the glory days of uh, mid to late 20th century perfumery. And I think that's what's so exciting because as anyone will know, it is very hit and miss if you buy an old bottle or something. Uh, you may really enjoy the way it smells, but you're, you, even if it's been, been born up reasonably well, your old Chanel or your old uh, whatever it may be, Gucci, Nobile or whatever, you may find that it doesn't smell quite how it would have smelt fresh out of the bottle 
when it was produced 30, 40 years ago. And of course, with your stuff, we know that all the top notes, the bergamot are fresh, which is the beautiful thing. Mm. It's a bit like how these old school things may have smelled when you bought them back in the days. Although, of course, they are unique compositions, which is the beautiful thing. OK, so I'll move mm. on. Just I won't highlight all of your, you know, the whole range here. But uh, one other one that I know, of course, I want to know about your newest releases too. Chypre Siam, I am absolutely infatuated with. Um, yes. This is a beautiful classic Chypre, very rich as well. Uh, as being kind of has that classic green bitterness reminds me a tiny bit and i do mean a small bit of my mitsuko but with a, a much deeper richer kind of aura about it but I, I get a little you know i get that classic shipra link and i think you mentioned koti shipra as an inspiration so just tell us a bit about shipra siam please yeah the whole idea was to use that that classic shipra structure but incorporate uh, this is where the, the whole cooking and food comes in. Um, <laughs> Southeast Asian uh, materials in there. So things like, you know, lemongrass, um, ylang, uh, kefir lime. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Sheep Siam is a must try from this house. Uh, it it's, may have overtaken Moose Illuminate as my absolute favorite. So do, do not miss this one if you're intrigued by the house. Uh, I'll do one more quick one. And uh, this one got a lot of talk amongst uh, people like me I, i'm sort of famously into my barbershop fragrances or fougeres and things like this and you're you're uh, much hyped maybe one of your most acclaimed ones in the uh, the online world i think was bon monsieur i think that was a little bit more recent like 2020 ish or something well, maybe that, even 20. Yeah. um and that, that's a fantastic classic fougere so just just tell us a little bit about that one uh i was inspired by uh lavender absolute it was a I, I purchased some uh, some essential oils from Eden Botanicals, and one of the little samples they put in there was was lavender absolute, and I was just blown away by it. So I, I wanted to create a fragrance that was built around that one particular ingredient. Wonderful. Okay, I mean, it, the, and now that you mention it, yes, there is quite a bit of lavender in there, but there's yeah. so much else going on. It's got that classic kind of green uh, opening for a fougere and a wonderful kind of dry down and development on the skin or on clothing or wherever you, wherever you spray it. And it really does uh, conjure up some images of, of some of my old favorites here. Again, I, I'm not in any way saying that it's, you know, based on any other fragrance, but it conjures up happy memories of I've got a, I'm lucky to have an old Gucci Nobile. People have talked about that. it. Yeah, that's a great like, fragrance, huh? I, yes. I wish I still. I, I traded my bottle years ago, uh, and I, I, I'm still mad about that. I. It's really hard mm -hmm. to find now, isn't it? Yeah, I lucked mm -hmm. out uh, a, a couple of years back and got a bottle. And yeah, people have sort of talked about this as sort of a, a better, an improved take on something like Dracar Noir. Now, I, I don't. I think there's much more to it than that. But I'm, I would just say that if people like that classic type of fougere, classic green, dry fougere, this delivers that in a, in a fantastic way. And of course, with, with yeah, a, a beautiful lavender accord at its heart. Amazing stuff. So old school fragrance fans, do not miss out on this one. Uh, very briefly, I'll just say I also recently got Derviche, which is a little bit more animal malic and funky and challenging and wonderful and exotic and maybe if you just give us a couple of words on that one actually uh, i think this is a little bit harder for me to categorize or describe in a few sentences so perhaps you can do better than me yeah i, I just want to do one of those those kind of old type of ambery fragrances like um like emerald by cody by cody i mean this it, it smells nothing like it of course but i i just wanted to do some of those really built around the, the vanilla and labdomum and bergamot. So I mean, those are the three main, the three main materials in there. And okay, then, vanilla, labdanum, and bergamot. Yes, so something with a little bit more of a vanillic undertone. Check this one out, guys. Uh, I know a couple of people, huge fans of that one, as, as well as I am. It's my most recent purchase. Yeah, I wanted to ask you then about your most recent, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, is it Lom M. Lacroix? Lacroix. Yes. Forgive yeah. my pronunciation. That looks great. It's a leathery sheepra, I believe. Tell us about that it one. Is. Yeah, it's a leathery sheepra. It's um, it's all natural too. Uh, yes. I, I recently had to pull floor and fauna because I, I was having a difficult time finding uh, civet absolute. Uh, I used to get it from Robert mm -hmm. Tay, but uh, they discontinued that, and I, I wasn't sure anything I got out there is it going to be ethically sourced? Is the 
is is the quality going to be um, consistent consistent so i just decided to pull it and i i would say that this replaces uh flora and fauna in my lineup as far okay. as non natural fragrance goes okay so flora and fauna is, is no longer in the lineup this one now the name i, I forgive my ignorance the m lacroix bits could you just explain what that means in the oh, name i should have um, Miss, Miss, yeah, Monsieur Le Croix, uh, Mr. Croix. Yes. <laughs> it, it was, um, it was a bit of a play um, on family history. Uh, uh, the Crosses originally came out of France, and the last name was Le Croix. They were they were exiled out of France, and eventually went to Ireland, and then they had to flee Ireland for the New World because they were engaged in in smuggling. Okay. So. Um, I, I I kind of played the whole uh, rogue ancestry bit into. I like that. it. Uh -huh. So this is a bit to do with the history of your actual family. It's not just someone who happened to have the same name. These were actually ancestors of yours. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Alan and Cornelius Lacroix were the two original crosses that were booted out of France. Oh wow! Is this a famous story? <laughs> it's it's a family story. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to Google this. I love it. Okay, well, that one looks really great. I've seen a couple of great write-ups on Instagram. So, uh, yeah, go to the website, check it out. You can, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you can find some good reviews there on Fragrantica, etc. It sounds like it might be the uh, next one that I might have to consider uh, adding to my collection. Um, I've got a couple of other more trivial questions for you, but just to, uh, probably an unfair question, but right now, if you had to name one that's your absolute favourite that you've been most delighted with that you've, you've created so far, which one would it be? Either one of the ones we've mentioned or anything else? Uh, right now, the, the newest one is quickly becoming my favorite. But uh, just before that, uh, Vetifleur. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ver Vertifleur. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that one too. Okay. Uh, okay, guys, check out amazing range of fragrances, all kinds of different stuff in there. Uh, I noticed with you, actually, I don't see loads of reviewers always getting sent free bottles or that kind of thing. So I wondered how you, you, you seem like an old school kind of guy. Do you have much interest in or contact with the world of YouTube influencers or Instagrammers, or do you just try and build your reputation more on a sort of word of mouth type of way? Uh, right now, it's mostly word of mouth. I, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty horrible when it comes with with social media. I don't know if it's just because I'm a Gen X or I'm just kind of me too. To party on that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, I'm I'm trying to break out of my shell when it comes to that. Because, okay. I mean, just even a couple of years ago, I, I would never have wanted to go and do an interview like we're doing now. I'm just, I'm very <laughs> introvert. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. Listen, I, I used to hate doing anything. I, I do yeah. live streams now and all kinds of things, but I, I used to dread these things. But once you get, once you force yourself, it, it changes. But I, I, well, we have something in common because we're both Gen X. And I believe it or not, I'm actually a horrible introvert myself. So uh, I do, I do empathise with you there. Okay, so it had, this does intrigue me a little bit then, because you have got a great reputation. Uh, obviously, a lot of it is is somewhat online, inevitably that, that you build a brand like this. But yeah, you're you're not sort of uh, you, you clearly don't have a social media strategy. You're not sending out dozens or probably any free bottles to people on YouTube or anything. So how do you grow? Uh, a small brand like yours that when you first started probably doesn't have a lot of clout how did you manage to kind of get yourself out there it must be very difficult yeah in the beginning i mean i began selling on on etsy yes, um, that's where i bought my first one yeah mm -hmm. yeah that was yeah. that's where i first started doing it and um eventually i mean I, th I think it was like a few months later there were um a couple of base noters that had picked up samples I guess just out of curiosity and they started writing about it and from there just more and more folks started looking into the brand and, and trying it out. I respect that. Okay, so yeah, you, you, it seems just purely based on the, or mainly on the quality of the sense rather than any, uh, uh, let's say, falsely generated uh, hype or anything like that. You, you've managed to, to have steady success, which I, I really do respect and admire that actually. So hats off to you for that. Uh, I just, yeah, what, what's the future then? Are you, are you happy with where you are now? Are you hoping one day you'll be in department stores looking to sort of sell other, in other places? Or are you, you kind of happy with where you're at at the moment? What, what's the plans for the future? Yeah, um, I'm just gonna keep plugging away. Um, the, the idea of department store sounds great, huh? I mean, I mean, monetarily that'd be awesome, but um, I, 
I think there's there's maybe just a bit too much of an edge to these fragrances. I don't I don't know if it's really department store material, but I'm just gonna keep uh, plugging away, just making making what I like and okay. sharing with others. I respect that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, just to, uh, so I, I'm just going to ask you about sort of, do you ever watch any kind of, generally speaking, do you watch YouTube reviewers? Do you follow whatever's going on with Jeremy Fragrance? Do you keep keep an eye on any of that stuff at all? I, I'm suspecting not, but I thought I'd ask. Yeah, uh, no, that's it's, <laughs> it's not really my thing. I, I don't, I honestly don't really have the, the time for it. I, mean, I, got, yeah. I got my two boys that suck up a good 98% of my day to begin with. So All right. Every day is just a it's just a constant um, mundane race, <laughs> you know. Well, Getting through the day, trying to get work done. Right yeah, now, no, kids. Tr trust me. Watching YouTube fragrance videos can be equally mundane. I'm afraid, so you, you're not missing much. Okay. Now, uh, last little thing. It's been a fantastic interview. Let us know in the comments down there, guys. We can get uh, Manuel back uh, another time and get a little bit more in depth with him. I might even try and bend his arm to to dive into a live stream. That the maelstrom of my live streams is a, a hellish world. But we decided to record this interview. We're going to end with a quick fire fun question round for you. And we're just going to draw. We've done this with a few other guests too. So it's kind of an either or thing. Some of them are fragrance related, some of them are not. I hope you don't mind a little bit of silliness. And uh, here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. Dramatic music coming now. Okay. Beast mode or polite siage? Oh, which do I prefer? Uh, yes. Polite. Most guests well, have said that. Yes. Moose is, Moose is pretty powerful stuff, but it was never meant to be. He's very, yeah. I must say, yeah, ironic because his fragrances do have great performance, but if you apply them judiciously, then you, you can control that to your own wishes. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, they, I would stress they are very strong. Oh, and also, guys, by the way, I've bought all of these with my own money, so this is not any kind of tie up or collaboration, just a disclaimer there. Okay, getting more silly with some of these questions now cheeseburgers or tacos? Uh, cheeseburgers coming from the chef okay look most yeah. ta tacos have a slight lead in the poll so far but it's good to hear I'm, I'm a cheeseburger I'd, I'd go cheeseburger too cats or dogs cats any particular reason uh, I've just always had cats since I was a yeah. since I was a kid I, I mean I haven't had one for the past few years you know I, he died after 16 years oh. but uh, there's just a certain vibe that they seem to bring to the household yes I, I do have a couple of dogs running around out back oh. right now you know, oh, running okay. around the snow. Okay, okay, so you, you, you quite like both. Okay, uh, <laughs> Aventus or Sauvage? Um, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so, uh, I say Sauvage. Uh, actually, okay. the more recent one, the Elixir. Yes. That one was really good. I, I like that yeah, one. Yeah, a lot of people who weren't keen on the others did, did have a certain liking for that one. Okay, great answer. Probably a redundant question for you, but I'll do it anyway. Jeremy Fragrance or Debbie Rawling? I wouldn't even know how to answer that. Shall okay. I take a point? <laughs> yeah. That's fine, that's fine. D Dior or Chanel? Mmm, ah, uh, Chanel. Fair enough. Any particular reason? There's just a certain, I mean, they're, they're both great houses, but there's just a certain quality that seems yeah. consistent with, with Chanel through and through. I think Chanel edges it for me too, yeah. Uh, niche or designer? I tend to go more niche, I guess you can say. Unless you're talking about uh, designers, 70s, 80s. <laughs> yeah. Let's say now, yeah, things that he can buy, uh, releases yeah. of today, niche. Okay, fair niche, enough. Yeah. If anyone's got any uh, overseas connection from wherever they live, I do this one. So you're in America, but you've got French heritage. So the question for you is France or the USA? Uh, USA. <laughs> fair enough. That's where, mm -hmm. that's where you are. Uh, Creed or Tom Ford? Tom Ford. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite sport, if any? Oh, gosh. Sport. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I do sit down and watch anything, it'd be baseball. Fair enough. Baseball. Okay. Do you have a, a favorite team? No, not in particular. Okay. Uh, favorite band or musician? Uh, favorite band is The Cure, still. <laughs> I like them. Yeah, I, 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 I still I, listen to them to this day. I've got a lot of time for the cure. I, 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 yes, Robert Smith. Very, uh, yeah, a lot of respect for him. Okay, great choice. Um, nearly there. Favorite film? 
favorite film? It's, it's a funny one. Uh, the Three Amigos. Ah, Chevy Chase and Co. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see that coming. I, I thought you'd say something terribly artistic. All right, good. Uh, I like that. I, I won't even delve into that. Favorite book, if any. Favorite book. I got a lot of favorite books. It's, I'd say it's still uh, Brothers Karamazov. Ah. Dostoevsky, yeah. Dost oh, now that is, that, that's in stark contrast to your favorite film. You've just, you've, yeah, raised, it, it you've raised, raised is, the right? cultural bar there a little bit. Okay, it, it's the one I'll still pick up and read years later. I'll, I'll still reread it. Fantastic. Dostoevsky, it's the, the Brothers Ka Karamazov, right? Yeah. I've, I've vaguely heard of it. I'm, I'm afraid I can't say it. And finally, perfect one for you, favorite food of all time. Favorite food? Um, that, that kind of moves around, doesn't it? Yes. It still goes. It still goes back to Italian, like okay. the traditional Italian. Okay, I really, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much, guys. The links are down there to so check out the Manuel Cross range of Rogue perfumes. They are absolutely amazing, and I can honestly say that as a purchasing, buying customer, one of my favorite modern niche brands out there, and a fantastic perfumer. Watch out for this guy. I think great things are still to come, and we want to thank you so much for joining us. Let us know what you think about that in the comments down below. We will see you in the next episode. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. And sometimes life can stink, but we can always smell good. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.